Russia is slowly advancing towards the Ukrainian town of Bakhmut in Donbass, while Moscow accuses Kyiv of striking the Russian city of Belgorod. Several loud explosions are heard in the center of Kyiv, a week after Russia began coordinated airstrikes against several Ukrainian cities. A Belarusian regiment has been established for dissidents who want to fight with Ukraine against Russia and has already received hundreds of applications. Heavy fighting continues in Ukraine's eastern Donetsk and Luhansk regions, with the most difficult taking place near the town of Bakhmut. Officials in Donetsk, which remains under Russian separatist control, have blamed Ukraine for a rocket attack that did significant damage to the city's mayor's office. According to the separatist authorities, four people were injured. In his nightly address, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky admitted the key hotspots in Donbass are Soldar and Bakhmut, and added that there are around 2,000 released Russian prisoners fighting for the Russian armed forces there as mercenaries. The Russian Belgorod region bordering Ukraine was once again hit by strikes on Sunday. The local governor said more than 20 homes were damaged. The city had until recently rarely been hit, unlike the surrounding region. The attacks come in the wake of Friday's strikes on an electric substation in Belgorod and Saturday's gun attack at a military training ground in which 11 people died. Moscow has described that as a terrorist attack. Meanwhile, in the town of Izium in the east, the shadow of war still hangs over the city after its recapture by the Ukrainian army. Volunteers have been bringing a small touch of normality, food parcels, including chocolate, an unseen luxury after months of deprivation. Several loud explosions rocked the center of Kyiv on Monday morning. A week after Russia began coordinated airstrikes against Ukrainian cities. The capital's mayor, Vitaly Klitschko, said the central Shevchenko district of the capital had been hit and urged residents to take shelter. The explosion sparked a fire in a non-residential building and damaged several apartment blocks, Klitschko said in his Telegram channel. So far, we haven't been told if there are any casualties. Social media posts showed a fire emerging with smoke billowing into the air. Just a week ago, a missile struck a children's playground near the Kyiv National University's main buildings. In Poland, a recruitment center and training point has been established for Belarusians who want to fight with Ukraine's forces. Organizers say hundreds of people have applied to join a special Belarusian regiment named after the 19th century revolutionary Kastus Kalinuski. They started getting ready and writing where to get a visa, what's the best way to get into the regiment, how to leave Belarus. Increasingly, dissident Belarusians are seeing the war in Ukraine as being tied to regime change in Minsk. Vadim Kabanchuk fights in the Kastus Kalinuski regiment. He says that Ukraine and Belarus have one common enemy. It is also our war, because we have such a motto in the regiment. We liberate Belarus through the liberation of Ukraine. We have one enemy, Putin's regime and his puppet, Lukashenko. Of course, we would not want to fight with our own countrymen. But if they started entering Ukraine, we would meet them first and we would ask the Ukrainian leadership for this. We want this because we hope that most of them will join us. This will be the end of Lukashenko's regime. We will then go with them to the territory of Belarus and we will also remove the regime. And finally, we will free the Belarusian people from the dictatorship. The representatives of the Belarusian diaspora in Poland have no doubts on which side their society is on, or how important this war is for the entire region. The majority of people in Belarus, they do support uh, Ukrainians. Uh, they do support their fight for freedom. It is extremely important for us to fight for Ukrainians because they are leading this fight, the second wave of liberation in Europe. And I think that this time we simply cannot afford ourselves to lose, and ourselves, I mean, 
uh, Ukrainians as well as Belarusians. To help Russia, we need to have free Europe, including Belarus and Ukraine. Many dissidents from Ukraine, Belarus and Russia have found a home in Poland. Increasingly, they are tying their struggles together in the hope of gaining a shared success. With only a few days to go before Giorgia Meloni is expected to be asked by Italy's President Sergio Mattarella to try and form a governing coalition, uh, political consultations are in fact due to begin this week. Uh, the right-wing coalition that won last month's general election is already showing its first signs of weakness. It all started last Thursday when the new Speaker of the Senate was elected following a round that was captured on camera between Ignazio La Russa, who was later appointed as the new head of the Senate, and Silvio Berlusconi, the leader of Forza Italia, one of the three parties that formed the ruling uh, coalition. The appointment of La Russa is known to be an admirer of Benito Mussolini, did not go down well with the former prime minister. And on the same day, Berlusconi's handwritten notes that were captured by uh, photographers included a list of derogatory adjectives about Meloni. Now, Meloni and Berlusconi are due to meet uh, today to discuss what happened with Giorgia Meloni, who has requested Berlusconi's uh, apologies. Now, the appointment of La Russa has also been heavily criticized by opposition parties such as the left-wing Democratic Party. So a crucial week is about to begin here in Italy on the political front and despite the fact that the two allied leaders perhaps will eventually make peace, it could uh, turn out to be a fragile truce that is not expected to last long. Giorgio Orlandi for Euronews in Rome. Former Chinese Vice Premier Zhang Goli has appeared in public for the first time since tennis star Peng Shui last year alleged he forced her into sex during a years-long relationship. Zhang was once the Communist Party's number seven official, but has kept a low profile since China's most public hashtag MeToo scandals. Peng posted the allegation on social media before later taking it back. Funerals for the miners killed in a coal mine explosion in northern Turkey are taking place after rescuers found the body of the last missing miner. At least 41 people died in the blast, which left 28 more injured. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan sparked anger by referring to the deaths as fate and the result of the type of accident that will always draw a storm of criticism. The EU's crime agency Europol has announced that it, along with the Spanish National Police and its tax agency, has dismantled what they suspect to be Europe's largest narco bank. The bank, which had been active since 2020, is believed to have laundered over 300 million euros per year through drug trafficking in over 20 countries. Authorities have arrested 32 people in the investigation. Many of them are Syrian nationals. Incumbent Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro and presidential candidate Luis Inácio Lula da Silva faced off in the first one-on-one -on -one debate of this second round in the election. And like the first round, they once again exchanged mutual accusations of corruption and mismanagement during their times in office. The truth is that you didn't take care of people during the COVID-19 pandemic. You had fun, laughed and said you'd not have the vaccine and said that those who did would become alligators and homosexuals and that they should not have the vaccine. You made fun of people, imitated people drowning with no oxygen in Manaus. There isn't in the history of any government in the world someone who played with the pandemic and with death like you did. Lula da Silva, who served as president from 2003 to 2010, was marred by corruption charges that were eventually quashed. However, he was imprisoned for a time. Throughout his campaign, Bolsonaro has repetitively used this against his opponent. You used money for corruption. Everything was corrupt in your government, everything. You denied water to the northeast. I took the water. Furthermore, the army has worked hard in the northeast, digging wells for those people that are far from these massive streams that have river water. <coughs> Millions watched the debate broadcast on TV, the internet and social media, 
The latest polls from before the debate put Lula da Silva ahead with 49% of votes and 44% for Bolsonaro. The final vote will take place on the 30th of October.